Now, I want to take us back. I've got a guest over here in the audience, Sterling Burnett with the National Center for Policy Analysis. Sterling, you've been on this program. You've been sitting right here in this chair, times. right, several oh, times, yeah. uh, talking about the global warming issue and other environmental issues. We have, um, first of all, just finished or are trying to finish this thing in Copenhagen. Uh, give, give that viewer, first of all, a little bit of history, say, prior to Copenhagen. Take us about to Kyoto or Rio or wherever Gosh. you want to take us. Give us just a little bit of historical perspective. A little bit in a short time. Well, 1990, first Bush as president. Uh, I guess it's 91 or 92, just before he left office. So just when he started this program. Just right. when he started the program. He signed uh, uh, a global agreement concerning global warming. At that time, the United States pledged to cut its greenhouse gas emissions to 2000, to, to cap them uh, at 1990 levels by the year 2000. Did we do that? We didn't do that. Okay. It was all through voluntary mechanisms. We didn't, weren't the only ones that missed that target. Right. Uh, everyone signed that agreement. No one hit that target. Um, in 1997, Contra what the Senate had directed the president when he went over, when he sent actually Al Gore over to negotiate, to sign this mm -hmm. treaty, to ink the deal, so to speak. Um, we agreed, their signature is on the, is on the treaty. We didn't uh, ratify it because the Senate wouldn't ratify it. To cut our emissions to 7% 7, 7 below 1990 levels between the years 2008, 2012. The Senate never ratified it. We are nowhere near that target. Uh, now in Kyoto, I mean in Copenhagen, they're trying to, they, they've been trying to negotiate a treaty. Um, President Obama talked about by 2020 uh, being 17% below 2005 levels. So we've upped the target uh, date. Uh, we've, we've cut emissions steeper. And then his longer term target is 2005. Uh, 80 to 83 percent below 2005 levels. That possible? Oh, sure. It's logically possible. We can turn off all the lights and not run any cars, and 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 you know, it, it would put us per capita emissions before immigration, before population increase, per capita emissions. It would put us at about 1870. 1870. So if, right. if, if, if you can live with that. Uh, I don't know if I can live with that. But let me ask you, has this, hasn't this planet been warming in the last 100 years, yes or no? Uh, I'd, I'd like to say that uh, the data had gotten more clear since you showed those first uh, segments. But the truth is, the data is pretty, is pretty clear on this one point. The Earth has warmed about a degree over the last 150 years. And has human, have humans contributed to it? Is that the issue? That's where the, the, the rubber hits the road, uh, because it's not clear that humans have contributed to it. And of course, just in the past two months, it has become fuzzier and fuzzier as to what you, whether you can trust the science on this. Uh, oh, the scientists. Last question. Will cap and trade be a huge tax if it happens, yes or no? Oh, there's no question about that. You can't get us from our present levels and our present trajectory, if the economy is going to increase, to 80 percent below 2005 levels without increasing the cost of energy to everyone in this audience. You're just a real uh, a fountain of, of optimism here. Thank you so much, Sterling, for being here.